up travelers, it's Alyssa from Means to Travel and I am here today with my friend Eric from Travel Adventures with Eric B. And the reason why he's here with me today is because we are sitting in New Orleans, Louisiana in Jackson Square and he is a Louisiana native. And we're going to be sharing our tips for visitors to New Orleans, Louisiana. So let's jump into it. First tip that we are going to share is how do you pronounce this city? Am I in New Orleans? You pronounce this city New Orleans. But like fastest. a lens. New Orleans. <laughs> New Orleans, right? New Orleans. Did I get it right? Right, New Orleans. Yes, so if you say New Orleans when you're here, people are gonna look at you a little funny, aren't they? Yeah, they'll know you're not from here. They'll know you're a tourist. <laughs> you don't want to be known as a tourist. Those people, those are bad people. They get taken advantage of. But one thing that you did teach me is that the parish that New Orleans is in is actually called Orleans Parish. Correct. Okay. Yeah. Orleans Parish, but New Orleans. Yeah. So we're in New Orleans and things here are like open all day, aren't they? Things are open very late. As far as as far as the tourism industry, at least, if you're out in the French Quarter, you can find a bar open 24 hours a day to get a drink. There's a lot of things open all night here in New Orleans. And from what I've experienced so far, this is my second day in New Orleans. People are drinking all day. <laughs> oh yeah, I think they I think they go to sleep with like a drink in their hand as they hit the pillow, and I think they wake up with that same drink. Oh my gosh! I guess that leads us into the next one well you know louisiana has interesting laws when it comes to liquor we're talking about the container policy in louisiana it's the only state that i know of where you can buy a drive-in daiquiri you could go to a shop pull up in the driveway and buy a daiquiri the only the only thing is you can't put the straw in but you can buy it right there and then take it away at least they say do you they can. give you a straw so they give you a straw i mean if you put it in i mean that's on you but they say don't don't put the straw in but they do give you a straw that's where you get in trouble straws be careful <laughs> <laughs> especially but, if those paper straws no one likes those. <laughs> yeah those are gonna melt by the time you get <laughs> to where you're going <laughs> um anyway so the crazy thing that if you're from out of town like me is seeing people walking around the streets with just an open beer open cocktail in their hands normally where i'm from there's no open container laws at all so that's definitely a different but there's experience. one caveat to that it can't be glass though so if you, you can't walk around with like a glass bud light bottle you got to put it in a plastic cup but you can walk around with plastic and drink in new orleans so what that means then is that people can take their drinks to go right they from bar to bar to <laughs> can you walk into a, a bar with some other bars drink some some bars are funny about it but i've done it before it depends on the establishment like some some bars will say you know you can't drink their drink in here and you got to finish it before you come in but I, i've walked into bars before with other establishments drinks Just wow depends. i think a lot of people come here for like bachelor or bachelorette parties or birthdays um like big birthdays or something like that so you see a lot of people just walking around, especially the French Quarter, drinks in their hands, having the time of their lives. And, and also while we're talking about liquor in Louisiana in general in New Orleans, it's one of the few states and places where you can go to Walmart or go to just a random corner store somewhere and you can just buy liquor there. So another thing too, um, on top of being able to buy alcohol in a lot of places that you maybe wouldn't normally be able to in other, in other states, other cities in the US, there's also differences in like underage drinking tell me if i'm wrong but what i learned is that if you are under 21 but you're with your parents say at a restaurant or something you can drink which is not the case where we're from <laughs> you, you can drink if you're if you're with your parents and they give you permission you can drink yeah that's that's just mind-bogglingly different than from where i'm from in chicago um there's just a lot of differences in the liquor law so familiarize yourself with that before you come here and yeah have fun the next one we're going to talk about is to make sure you are watching where you step because like we said people are kind of carrying around their alcohol on the streets especially in the french quarter there might be broken glass on the street you don't want to have that also maybe consider making sure you wear closed-toed shoes because i've noticed at least when i've been walking around here there's maybe broken glass there's uneven sidewalks a lot of the time um, you just want to not get some of that dirt and grime that's from <laughs> some of those parties, some of those birthday parties, bachelorette parties. 
on your feet as you're walking around. So wearing sandals maybe wouldn't be the best footwear choice. Wearing stiletto high heels maybe would be a little hard on some of those cobblestones, that sort of thing. And the cobblestones and the potholes too, because there are a lot of potholes that you might just randomly find walking around in New Orleans. So you gotta be real careful with that. You wear the wrong shoes, you might turn the wrong way and you might twist an ankle. And yeah. that, that, that won't be a great end to a vacation if you're gonna end up with a twisted ankle. Potholes in the sidewalks, potholes kind of in the street sometimes. Derek almost fell into one that had been filled in by sand yesterday. <laughs> um, that would have been hard to put your foot right straight into like a sand pit. No. <laughs> so yeah, make sure you're like, watching where you step. Similarly to watching where you step, you might want to also be watching your surroundings, right? <laughs> yeah, you want to have situational awareness. For sure. And there's going to be, you know, there's always somebody that you know that maybe had gotten in trouble in some way in New Orleans. Maybe they had too much to drink and kind of lost their situational awareness. Don't be that person. And I would say this too, if you're a tourist and you're here, don't be that person where you'll see someone fighting or someone about to start something and you go run to it and go stand in line to watch it. I, I say get away from it and go do, go do something else. Don't stand there and, and try to be a part of it because you know, jumping into a bad situation can only put you in a worse situation. Also, make sure if you're driving by any chance, well, I, would, I don't recommend you drive across Bourbon Street, but if you are, or you're driving anywhere in the French quarters, watch out for the drunk people. If you are driving across Bourbon Street, oftentimes people will jump in front of your car, they will dance, they will do stupid things. So you really want to avoid that. You want to park a little further out or you want to park early before people are out if you can. You want to stay away from that. For sure. And speaking of Bourbon Street, the next tip that we're going to share is that New Orleans is not just Bourbon Street. <laughs> and New Orleans is a lot more than just Bourbon Street. I will say, when I was in college, I used to come down here all the time and I would go to Bourbon Street and I'd party every week and it was all about partying on Bourbon Street. But now, you know, I can appreciate more the culture of New Orleans, walking around, looking at the beautiful architecture, all the great museums. There's so many areas and so many things you can do. Central Business District, Magazine Street. There's just so much around to see and to do in New Orleans to have nothing to do with Bourbon Street. And there's areas out here in the French quarters that are close to Bourbon Street, but there's still, you don't have to go on Bourbon Street to have a great time. You can have a great time one street over on Royal. Yeah, I've noticed that a lot of the restaurants that I'm very excited about in New Orleans are actually in the Garden District. Right, yeah, and, and uh, Frenchman Street. That's one I wanted to throw in too because a lot of the locals go to Frenchman Street. You should definitely go check out Frenchman Street where the locals are and see how the locals do things instead of just being around the, the tourists throwing up everywhere. <laughs> and uh, and not, not, not to mention the cops that ride around with the horses and they drop horse manure on the ground Ooh. everywhere. You yeah. know, it's situational awareness again, don't step in it, make sure you're looking. Maybe don't wear open-toed shoes if that's a risk as well. <laughs> I've, I've made that mistake before, I've stepped in it. Oh no. <laughs> He's like, and I'm gonna warn everyone <laughs> from my- Never experience. again. <laughs> Next tip, even though we've been talking about people partying a lot, yucky things on the streets, New Orleans is actually a cool place to bring your kids if you have them, right? Well, the thing about New Orleans is, I say it's a great place to bring your kids because there's so many parks and green space. Like, we're out here right now in front of Jackson Square, and I'm looking at a whole big park right there. Kids running around. There's uh, Armstrong Park that's close by. City Park is amazing. You could go to City Park right by the uh, art museum, and, there, and there's the little ducks out in the ocean. You could get on the ocean, the pond, but you could get in the ducks and ride around on the ducks. There's a great children's museum. And those are like little boats that are shaped little like boats. ducks, right? Exactly. So fun. Yeah, and the, the zoo is really good. The Audubon Zoo, the Aquarium of America is right down here, right behind us. It's a really good aquarium. So there's so many things you can do with your kids. And you can bring them in the French quarters. Just don't bring them on Bourbon Street late in the evening or at night. Yeah, I feel like there's just too many people being too unpredictable probably that time of day. Very. <laughs> Next tip is that when you are here, there's so many great food and drink options that are like kind of local favorites, local to New Orleans. Definitely check those out. Make sure you try as many as you can. A few of them are, do you want to share? Fantastic. Um, my, A few some of them of my, are fantastic. They're all fantastic. Some of my, <laughs> some of my favorites is 
or gumbo. I'm kind of a gumbo snob, so if it's not a really good gumbo, because I love gumbo. Jambalaya is one of my favorites. Crawfish and shrimp etouffee. Boudin sausage. And, I'm, and not boudin sausage. Not boudin, boudin sausage. And one more thing I was going to say too, because a lot of people come here like from different areas and say, I don't like Cajun and spicy food and all that. You should give it a try because I've known people who say they, they, don't, they don't like Cajun or spicy food. And then when they try it, they fall in love with it. And then there's a French market right there that <laughs> if you go there, they have a lot of samples of things. So you can try some of this food before you buy. So I recommend, you know, try it out. Give it a try. We did a walking tour earlier today together, and our tour guide mentioned at the French market there's muffaletta sandwiches too um, that you can try, and I think that would be really fun. Um, there's also and the muffaletta sandwiches, they are a local favorite, but they're not even the most famous sandwich in New Orleans. The most famous one is the po' boy. The po' boy. And there are so many different types of po' boys. They're generally on French bread, baguettes, but sometimes. You get a little softer French bread. I prefer the softer French bread rather than the harder for the po' boys, depending on how they cook it. But there's so many different kinds. You got the roast beef. You got the good hot ones like that. Turkey, ham, shrimp, catfish. I want to try a shrimp po' boy while I'm here. Shrimp sure. po' boy is amazing. You can't go wrong with a shrimp po' boy. <laughs> and the golf shrimp too. Mm. A lot of people shrimp. like the oyster po' boys too. That's that's a pretty popular one too. That's cool. We actually tried a local oyster that was charbroiled oysters when we were at a restaurant last night. That was pretty delicious. So always, if you're going to a restaurant, maybe ask what they're known for. Figure out what the local favorites are. Um, try the Cajun. Try the Creole. Try all of the the local types of cuisines. And also, Derek just reminded us that we need to talk about something that we just had this morning. That's the beignet. Fantastic. <laughs> Cafe beignet was better than Cafe Du Monde for my money, but they were both great. And I don't know if we're going to release that video before or after this one where we try both Cafe Beignet and Cafe Du Monde's beignets, but Stay tuned if we haven't already, or I'll put a link if we have down below, and you can see the difference between those two beignets, and those are the most famous ones here for sure. You'll like either one, but Cafe Beignet is really fresh and really good. So good. Then on top of that, there's also local drinks. There's definitely like drinks that are very famous to New Orleans. There's the Sazerac. The ingredients of a Sazerac are rye, absinthe, sugar, and bitters. Um, and it's definitely a, something that you see on a lot of menus here in New Orleans. Also a beat of beer, if you have beers nationwide, a beat of beer is located, it's everywhere now. A really good beer. But there's a lot of beers from Louisiana now that's everywhere. Yeah, and there's cocktails too. So hurricanes and- Hand grenades. Hand grenades, you'll see people wandering around with those. They're kind of in this like funny shape. <laughs> yeah, they're in this green thingamajig. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then the, the hurricanes are like a more pomegranate type drink as well. Both of those are a little bit sweeter, right? Right. Next tip is to absolutely make sure to check out the local museums if you have time. The one that I went to yesterday with Derek was the National World War II Museum and it was phenomenal. You've been there before too, I've right? been there before. Excellent museum. Yeah, you have to give a ton of time for that one because it is very large, very extensive. Um, and there's a great video that you can watch at the beginning of, or you know, whenever you want to actually while you're there, but we did it at the beginning and it kind of gives this good overview of, right. of the history of the war. Um, and it's produced by Tom Hanks, I believe. Like he's in it. So <laughs> that's kind of fun too. Um, and it's very interactive. It's in this IMAX theater. On top of that, there's just tons of information about America's involvement in World War II. What other museums would you say? Um, I really like the New Orleans uh, Art Museum, which is a beautiful area in City Park. The museum is massive, like you can be there all day. I have a video on it. It's, it's a really nice museum, there's a lot to see. And one of the cool things about it is the sculpture garden outside, you pay an additional $5 to go in. Cool. And the sculpture garden is also amazing. I have a video on the sculpture garden as well as the art museum. Cool. Both of those are fantastic. I highly recommend it. There's also, there's also a museum called Blaine Kern's Mardi Gras World, which I also have a video on. But that's a really cool museum because if you're ever interested in the Mardi Gras floats, how the floats are made, 
different types of floats like there's a million different floats in there and you can actually see the way they're made and there's videos and everything and it's located uh, by the Moriel Convention Center and if you've ever taken a cruise out of New Orleans it's right next to the cruise port oh nice those are great options. I feel like I really want to go to the art museum now. There's, we're also looking at another museum, the State of Louisiana Museum. Is that, that's what it's called. Or Louisiana State Museum. We're looking at right now across from us here in, and it's in huge. Jackson Square. Yeah, it's really large too. Um, you can also go visit the cathedral here. St. Louis Cathedral. Yeah, right next to the Louisiana State Museum too. So lots of really great indoor activities, I guess, if it's raining too, if you want to go see museums and stuff. The next thing to check out is absolutely check out the music scene when you're here. We haven't actually done that much yet. Um, I've only been here for like 48 hours at this point, but I really want to go see at least some jazz musicians play. But you were saying, there's music everywhere. There's music everywhere, and uh, there's a lot of free music here, and there's so many theaters that have shows here, like, you know, if there's an artist you like, there's a lot of places, a lot of music theaters, the Sanger, the Fillmore, and those type of places, but there's a ton of places where you can go see free shows all around here. Um, there's on uh, Frenchman Street, I mentioned that earlier, there's always live music playing there. Yeah. There's always live music on Bourbon Street. There's always live music all down here in the French quarters. There's so many street performers as well that are really good that just put on a show randomly out in the French quarters where you just pick up a seat, you know, tip them a few dollars. They're doing a great job. They're working their butts off for you, you know, yeah. and sit back and just enjoy some music. Absolutely. Familiarize yourself with the history of jazz a little bit too. There's that, a jazz museum right down the street. The yep. history of jazz museum. Yeah, so lots of really great music to, to experience when you're here. So just definitely make sure to check all that out. The final thing that we're going to talk about is other than kind of the things to do, we're going to do a quick little call out at the end of this video and say, make sure that you are aware of the weather when you come to New Orleans. <laughs> Oh, you definitely want to make sure you're aware of the weather, aware of hurricane season for one, because hurricane season usually starts in June and ends in September. A lot of hurricanes usually hit around the end of the season, around August and September. That's when the, the bigger ones have hit, you know, the Katrinas and the Gustafs and all of those. So and we just be had aware one this of that. Year, yeah. Um, this past year, Hurricane, um, hurricane Ida. Ida. Yeah. So definitely be aware of that. Be aware of the heat and mugginess and humidity starting pretty much about May every year and going all the way through September. And also be very aware that if you come here in like December or January, make sure you check the forecast because it might be cool and cold or it might be hot. I mean, there's been a lot of hot Christmases here, so yeah. you know, it all varies. But be very aware of the humidity one way or another. If it is cold, it'll be cold and, and damp it in your and bones. feel it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and if it's hot, you're gonna really feel it. Yeah, we're here in December right now and it's actually a beautiful day. Um, I'm wearing, you know, tank top <laughs> oh it's probably in the low 70s but just last week you were saying it's in the 50s so yeah definitely look at that that weather forecast for when you're here and pack accordingly yes. <laughs> all right well thank you so much eric for walking us through all of the tips for visitors to new orleans this is very helpful for me as i am a first time visitor <laughs> here this weekend why don't you say where we can find you on youtube real quick you can find me on YouTube at Travel Adventures with Eric B. And you can find me at Instagram and Facebook at Travel Adventures with Eric B. Definitely make sure that you guys go check out his channel. Again, I'm putting all of the information down below. Also make sure to please press that thumbs up button if you liked this video. And also make sure to press that red subscribe button below too if you haven't already. So that way you don't miss any of the travel videos and travel tips on this channel to come. Thanks so much for watching. Cheers. Happy travels. Bye. <laughs> That's definitely going in the blooper reel. Dry, absent. Man, they just got put behind an age restricted wall. An age restricted wall? <laughs> I make sure I'm 21. Touchdown! <laughs> also make sure you're a sports fan. <laughs> <laughs> I've only seen one person talking to themselves a day. That's like a record low at this point. <laughs> yeah. well, usually I see like four by now. <laughs> hey travelers, don't forget to subscribe and let's hang out more. Here are some links to other helpful travel videos on my channel and press that notification bell so you don't miss any new and awesome travel videos to come.